Hello everyone, welcome to New Hongadas. Today I want to show you a video that I took some time ago, specifically in July 2020. Uh, and I know I should have uploaded it before, but you know, I have to deal with some big procrastination issues. But also, this video had a lot of preparation. It means a lot to me and I really wanted to give it the, the attention it deserves. Today we will talk about the historical incidents that usually remains quite unnoticed, which is called the Namamugi incident. I was lucky enough to go to the place where the incident took place, and I really want to show you everything I saw. But just before we start, remember to subscribe and click on the bell if you want to get the latest notifications. I know I don't upload videos too much, so you might want to be uh, updated whenever that happens. Also, please feel free to like the video and leave a comment if you, if you want to. Uh, that will be really helpful for me. So, are you ready? Let's start! Namamugi is located in Kanagawa Prefecture, between Tokyo and Yokohama. It can be reached from Shinagawa by using the KQ Main Line. But what was exactly this incident about? HEADLINES! Some foreigners go to a country that has very recently opened to the world. There's some kind of a culture class with the locals and things end up a bit messed up. Although it becomes one of the turning points in Japan opening to the world. CONTEXT TIME! This incident happened during the so-called Tokugawa Shogunate, a period of more than 200 years, where the leader of the country, or shogun, always belonged to the Tokugawa family lineage. This incident involves two different sides, the Satsuma Domain on one side and a few foreigners on the other. So now, let's talk about both of them. What was a domain? Well, I'm not talking about the websites, also I'm not talking about Genshin Dungeons, although I'm very addicted to it recently. Previously, Japan's territory was organized in domains. I don't want to bore you with this, so simply remember that there were a lot of domains all over the country. But today, we'll focus on the Satsuma Domain. This was one of the most important domains at the time, controlled by the powerful Shimazu clan, with the capital being Kagoshima, a beautiful place I definitely want to visit. At that time, the ruler of the domain, or using the Japanese word, the daimyo, should be Shimazu Tadayoshi, but the actual ruler was the regent, his father, Shimazu Hisamitsu. But anyway, the incident we are mentioning today didn't happen in the Satsuma domain, but in Kanagawa. You might be wondering, why was this Shimazu clan so far away from home? Well, let's just say that after the big Sengoku period where, summarizing a lot, basically everyone fought against everyone, allies could change their sides quite easily, and no one could be completely 100% trusted, the winning shogun had to find a way to control all domains, including the ones belonging to the clans who were fighting against the shogun when the shogun was rising. But it couldn't be too controlling, or else the population could rebel easily. One of the solutions was the so-called Sankin Kodai, a custom where the daimyo had to live one year at their respective domain and one year at the capital of the country, Edo a former Tokyo. For example, these are the remains of the Satsuma residence in Tokyo. They were located very close to the current Tamachi station. And I came here because I wanted to show you the only evidence that we have currently about the Satsuma residence in Tokyo. This memorial. <laughs> this is the Satsuma clan, the rest and the remains of the Satsuma residence. And right now there is nothing, so if we see here what we have at the top are the, uh, the headquarters of NEC and NEC is like um, a maker of electrical appliances but uh, nothing related with the Satsuma clan. Actually, the distance between Satsuma domain and Edo was more than 1700 kilometers and it used to take around a month and a half each trip. 
So, on one side we have the Shimazu clan, with its leader, Shimazu Hisamitsu. But, what happened with foreigners? Well, just a few years before this incident happened, something very important happens in the country. Especially for foreigners, the end of the Sakoku. Sakoku, or close country, literally the kanjis means chain and country, was a policy of isolation from the foreign countries. The trade, and therefore outer influence, was restricted to a very few places, such as Nagasaki or the Ryukyu Kingdom. I won't be talking about the end of the Sakoku, the Commodore Perry, the Black Ships, or the Kanagawa Treaty in this video to avoid extending the video unnecessarily. Just bear in mind that this incident happened less than 10 years after the Sakoku Decree was officially lifted, so the country was still not completely used to foreigners. Sometimes I feel it's still not used nowadays. <laughs> At this time, the foreigners were only allowed to live in the port area of Yokohama. Today, the action will develop mainly around Kawasaki Shuku and Kanagawa Shuku. This picture shows how Kanagawa Shuku was at that time full of water until the actual line of buildings where we can find this sign. This is the area nowadays. A big plot of land has been built where we only had water before. By the way, if you come to the remains of the Kanagawa Shuku, you can find a restaurant where the wife of a very famous personality of the Japanese history used to work, Sakamoto Ryoma. Today, we won't be talking about him or the wife, as they are not involved in the incident, but I hope I can create a new video in the future. This is the current Yokohama, but, as I said, many of these plots of land were not there at that time, so let's try to ignore them. However, before knowing about the incident, let me tell you specifically about four foreigners. Introducing Fantastic Four! Nah, no, just kidding. But there were also three men and a woman. Their names were Marshall, Clark and Richardson. The three of them, merchants, and Marshall's sister-in-law, Margaret Watson. September 14, 1862. Our four foreigners would start the trip from the Kanai area the only area of Yokohama where they were allowed to live. They wanted to visit Kawasaki Daishi, so they made a servant bring their horses to Suzaki's shrine, and they went there by boat. From there, they rode the horses along the already mentioned Tokaido Road, heading to Kawasaki Daishi. However, they met the Shimazu Parade at Namamuki. Here's a map of Yokohama during that time, where we can clearly see this Kanai area, where our foreigners started the trip. Now, let me show you some of the chat we were having while they told me about the course of events. It was really interesting. どこ?そう、神社、ここら辺にあるんだね。そこまでボートで行って。そうだね。そうそうそうそう。ああ、そうか。そう、they so then the place where the foreigners were allowed to live was only this Only foreigners, yes. Only foreigners only allowed foreigner. to live here. And then they... Actually, the shogunate, I think they thought to protect the foreigners mm. from the Sono Joy people. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, let's try solving a math problem. Two groups of people are walking toward one another. Group A, formed by these four foreigners, leaves Yokohama to Susaki Shrine by boat, taking the horses that were waiting there and moving to Kawasaki Daisy. Group B, a parade of a thousand guardians projecting Shimazu Hisamitsu leaves Edo, planning to go back. Group A and Group B collides at Namamugi, 
So, if the average walking speed is 5 km per hour, what is the exact time that the collision will occur? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, the thing is that our foreigners group crossed the procession of the Simasu, which occupied the entire width of the road. Richardson was leading his party along the side of the road, very close to the Simasu procession, which was interpreted by his retinues as a very disrespectful act. And despite being gestured to dismount the horse, he refused. So the fight started. But first, let me tell you a little about the legal issue. In Japan, samurai were allowed to kill whoever was disrespecting them. That is known as kirisute gomen, which can be translated as authorization to cut and leave the body of the victim. And it was considered some sort of self-defense. Some people sought respect by performing dogeza, kneeling with the foreheads touching the ground. But even just dismounting the horse before the procession was respectful enough to not annoy the samurai. On the other hand, the British group was protected by an extraterritoriality agreement following the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Emi and Commerce. I know, it might be a long name. Just remember that the British citizens were quite protected at that time. I think many times throughout the history in many different countries there, there's been several disagreements or misunderstandings due to some laws and, or some contradictions. So, what could happen next? Same as what usually happens. Fight. Margaret was told to run away and she managed to escape safely, only losing her hat in the process. She tried to go to the British consulate, but it was closed. Later, she headed to the American consulate, a temple called Honkakuji. But the slope was too high to climb it by horse, and fearing to be caught, she kept escaping until she arrived to her residence in Yokohama. Clark and Marshall were severely wounded, but they managed to run away and reach the American consulate, this Honkakuji, where they were treated and saved, although they would die in Japan a few years later. Fun fact, the person who treated them was Hepburn, better known for creating a way to read Japanese with Roman letters, called Romaji. Take this advice from someone who's been learning Japanese for a few years. Romaji can be helpful at first when you are starting, but try to get rid of it as soon as you can. When you come to Japan, there's literally nothing written in Romaji. So try to get used to the other writing systems for your own sake. Anyway, back to our story. Richardson had the worst part of the deal. He was slashed several times and mortally wounded by one of the guards. He tried to run away, but wounded as he was, he fell from the horse about 200 meters away. And then the guards caught him and did the coup de grace. In Japanese, Todome. At this place, there's currently a memorial, built in 1883, very near to the current Kirin River. The body of Richardson rests at Yokohama Foreign General Cemetery, same as Clark's and Marshall's. When the autopsy was performed on Richardson, 10 deadly wounds were found. Who were the samurai attacking the foreigners? We preserve some of their names, such as the one who started the fight, Narahara Kisaemon, or the one delivering one of the final blows, Kukimura Rikyu. But how do we know? Well, 
Remember I told you before about the Kirisute Gomen? Samurai could kill other people if their honor was disrespected. But it's not like a full green light. There were some strict rules. One of them is that, as an act of self-defense, it had to be performed at the moment. Killing someone because three years ago they looked weirdly at you cannot be considered as self-defense. It's more like an act of grudge. Another rule for the Kirisute Gomen is that it had to be reported. Because of that, when the Shimazu clan arrived to Hodogaya Yuku, skipping Kanagawa Shuku, fearing a British retaliation, the daimyo sent a messenger back to Edo to tell the shogun about this incident. But without revealing the real names of the samurai involved. Instead, he said the murderer was a man called Okano Shinsuke. Who was that man? Well, not even the daimyo knew, as it was just a fake name created to protect them. During many years, the name of these attackers remained unknown until Kukimura spoke. In a report published many years later in a local newspaper from Kagoshima, Kukimura claims being the last surviving witness of the event, describing the situation in detail. So that was the incident itself, but what were the consequences? Was there any backlash? Well, remember the Anglo-Japanese treaty? That had been violated, so indeed, there was backlash. In 1863, England demanded both the shogunate and the Satsuma clan a compensation. The shogunate paid quickly, but the Satsuma clan was a bit more reluctant, so England takes a less peaceful stand. Seven British warships arrived at Kagoshima from Yokohama and seized three steam ships belonging to Satsuma, planning to bargain with them to get the compensation instead of fighting. However, the Satsuma forces started firing their cannons to the British ships. As a response, the British fleet burned the three Satsuma steamed ships, and after getting ready to attack, the mutual bombing started. Five people among the Satsuma domain and 13 from the British fleet were killed. Around 500 houses from Kagoshima were burned, although luckily the city had been evacuated in advance, so most of the losses were just material. Later, Satsuma negotiated and paid 25,000 pounds, borrowed from the Sogonate but actually never rebate, since the Sogonate would fall a few years later. They are people to pay the, the money to the British. Mm. They were yeah. poor people. The money that brought the money from the Sogonate mm -hmm. to the English people. Mm -hmm. mm. And then they were, came from Shogunate. Ah, they are from the Shogunate. And then they, actually the, the, these two, four people came from Satsuma. Ah, these four are from Satsuma and the other two, they are from the Shogunate. Yes. Uh -huh, I see. But also, the moral damage was huge. Japan, due to the very reduced trade with other foreign countries, had a great lack of technological progress, and its cannons couldn't be compared with the British weaponry. Satsuma would take a で、イギリスは打ってきたのはこれだから。サクレスするわけだ。で、こっちはただ壊すだけだ。それだけの文化の違いがあったわけだ。ですと、ですリアルジャスト、あ、アタックバー、フロムサツマサイド。ですね、
I truly hope that people like it. But before finishing, there are two people whose help I truly need to appreciate and I really need to say thank you for that. First of all, there is uh, Asami-san, who was the owner of the museum. Thanks to him, we were able to access a lot of documents, lots of information. He has a lot of uh, information about the, the incident itself. Basically, any question that you might have, he probably he is the, the living person with the biggest amount of information nowadays. And I was able to access to that information. I can't be any more grateful than I am to him for opening the museum to us and doing his best to explain and sowing the, this knowledge, sharing this knowledge to us. But also, I really want to say thank you to my history buddy. You know who you are. <laughs> because thanks to you, I managed to carry out this project to record this video. I know it's been a long time since the, the moment we took the video, uh, but sometimes the procrastination issues comes. And also the, the times that I was working, I really tried to pay attention. I really, I really wanted to prepare this video as it deserves because it really meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me to access all this history and being able to share it as I can. So I truly hope this is not the last history video I take. I truly hope I can take much more because I really, I really liked it. But everyone, that's the end of today. So thank you very much for watching all the video and see you next time. Bye bye.